you've talked about there's no such thing as a healthy, overweight person. Uh, why is that? Because this could be a controversial topic, being bearing in mind that something like 80% of Americans, and that's spreading into Europe as well, are overweight. And it seems to me that we're being told by the media to accept being overweight as normal now. Yeah, I don't really think it's controversial among you know, scientists and doctors who study this. I mean, I don't think there's much controversy here. I mean, we know that fat on the body causes insulin resistance, which means it interferes with the function of the insulin receptor. We know all long-lived individuals, all people who live past 95 years old are all insulin sensitive, not insulin resistance. The hallmark that marks longer lifespan is being insulin sensitive and being a lower, we know that when you the in proportion to your body weight goes up, your lifespan goes down through higher rates of cancer and heart disease. These are well accepted and well accepted facts. We know that the fat on your body um, is pro-inflammatory, ex excitatory on producing more estrogen production from the aromatase system. So the aromatase indine is activated by the inflammation coming off the fat supply because the fat supply doesn't get a great, the fat, fat cells don't get a great blood supply. They're not well perfused with blood vessels. So they create more inflammation. We know that fat on the body in proportion in a dose dependent relationship increases risk of infectious, serious infections, complications from infections and death from infections. And we know that fat on the body also um, pr you know, promotes angiogenesis. Let me say this again, that when we eat excess calories and when we eat higher glycemic carbohydrates, and we eat also excess protein. We promote these two hormones, insulin and IGF-1, insulin light growth factor one. And those hormones in higher levels are powerfully promote angiogenesis. They're fat storage growth hormones and promoting angiogenesis means we're promoting the growth of blood vessels to fuel the growth of fat. And in doing so, you're also allowing tumors and cells other, otherwise to replicate and, and glean a fat supply from the angiogenesis, promote, angiogenesis promotion. So fat growing fat on the body permissibly allows other cells that shouldn't be growing to grow simultaneously like tumors and cancers. Mm -hmm. So these are not controversial issues. These are well-established scientific facts. The, the twisting of reality that you can be healthy and overweight because all overweight people are pre-diabetic, not just the ones whose sugars start to rise because the, you know, the, my definition of pre-diabetes includes the damage from being insulin resistant with a high circulating insulin driving excessive angio angiogenesis. It's just a precursor to pre-diabetes and diabetes, just like the people who have normal blood pressure, eating the unhealthy diet, being overweight, especially when, when it, eating well, extra salt too, they always eventually develop high blood pressure, even though it's not high now. They're just a precursor to high blood pressure. Oh, I can eat all the salt and junk I want because my blood pressure is normal. Well, it's not going to stay normal. 90% of Americans over the age of 70 are on medication for their blood pressure. You mm -hmm. know, so this is crazy. Um, so it's just a matter of time until the overweight person suffers from and experiences these diseases that occur from the foods they're eating that allow them to become overweight. It reminds me of the, the analogy of the person who's fallen out of a window and they're falling to their death, but they're like, oh, so good, so, good, so, uh, so far, so good. You know, halfway down, they're good. So why, why do you think people are beginning to say that being overweight is a genetic condition? Um, well, everything's genetic to a degree, to a small degree, but obviously there were no overweight gazelles and antelopes, zebras, chipmunks, deer. There's no overweight early humans even. You know, and by the way, in, if we look at the incidence of breast cancer and prostate cancer in human history, it never hardly occurred. Even the first cancers that occurred in any um, significant number were testicular and scrotal cancer in the 14th century in men who worked as chimney sweeps and inhaling smoke. We never even saw breast cancer and prostate cancer because people couldn't get enough, you know, fatty, oily, greasy, sugary food back then. Food, this unhealthy food wasn't so available. So, the, you know, it's not predominantly genetic if it's something new, completely unique in human history. Um, but like everything else, 
we inherit certain tendencies and habits from our parents, and we inherit, inherit a tendency towards certain diseases like obesity when you do the wrong thing. Even breast cancer, you could say, has a genetic component. Some people are more prone to breast cancer with the GSTP1 gene or the BRCA gene. And, but even those cancers are suppressed when you eat healthfully. Mm -hmm. you do, do, scientists call that gene silencing. And when you need a diet rich in green vegetables, especially green cruciferous vegetables, those cancers do not increase risk of breast or prostate cancer under those conditions. But yes, there's, let's say, a group of um, Indians that the the um, that lived in the Ungonquin tribes in the United, southern United States, northern Mexico area, that their ancestors were all slim and long-lived. And they started, you know, became wealthy on the discovery of oil. And, their, and they started eating American food. And they all became overweight and almost all became diabetic. They had this genetic predisposition to become overweight and diabetic on American food. Mm -hmm. on oils and, you know, but not on their native foods that they ate when they were for the first many, many thousands of years that they were eating the, you know, the berries, the cactus roots and all the things they ate, their dot, their dot, their body was designed to eating natural foods with a, with a lower caloric density, with a higher nutrient density. Mm -hmm. When they go back to eating foods that have a low caloric, high nutrient density, they can be satisfied, lose weight, and their diabetes would go away or never come back. So there are some people with more genetic susceptibility to becoming diabetic or overweight, but this because you're somewhat more genetically susceptible than another person doesn't mean you have to have those things happen to you or you, you, that's not, that's inevitable. Yeah. I think that's an important point that's missed in the uh, newspaper headlines about obesity being genetic is that it's genetic, but only in a certain environment. And, and you've, you've said that brilliantly.